Hello everyone. I am Dr. Prashant and in this presentation we will talk about acute respiratory distress syndrome. Acute respiratory distress syndrome is defined as severe dyspnea of rapid onset along with hypoxemia and diffuse pulmonary infiltrates resulting in respiratory failure. The diagnostic criteria for acute respiratory distress syndrome, sometimes called the Berlin criteria, consists of oxygenation which we will discuss in the next slide. The onset is often acute and the chest radiograph consists of bilateral alveolar or interstitial infiltrates. Also, there is absent left atrial hypertension in that there is pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is less than 18 millimeters of mercury and there is no clinical evidence of increased left atrial pressure. The oxygenation as discussed in the previous slide is expressed as a ratio between the PaO2 and FiO2. We have three distinctions of this ratio, the first being between 200 and 300, between 100 and 200 and less than 100. Mild ARDS is characterized by a PaO2 by FiO2 of 200 to 300 millimeters of mercury. Similarly, moderate ARDS is characterized by a PaO2 by FiO2 of 100 to 200 and severe ARDS is defined as a PaO2 by FiO2 of less than 100 millimeters of mercury. Acute respiratory distress syndrome has three phases. The exudative phase in which hyaline membranes are formed and this occurs between 0 to 7 days. The proliferative phase in which there is interstitial inflammation and may occur up to 14 days. Finally, the fibrotic phase in which there is fibrosis occurs up to 21 days or more. The exudative phase of acute respiratory distress syndrome may be understood with this schematic diagram. On your left is the normal alveolus, this is the surfactant, this is the type 1 pneumocyte, here are the alveolar macrophages, this is the interstitium and this is the blood vessel. On your right is the injured alveolus during the acute phase. The alveolus fills up with a proteinaceous fluid during the acute phase and the cells shown herein are this is the activated neutrophil, this is the hyaline membrane that is formed, these are the alveolar macrophages as already discussed. The proliferative phase of ARDS is characterized by type 2 pneumocytes which predominate and synthesize new surfactant. The infiltrate changes from neutrophilic to lymphocytic predominant and some patients may still be symptomatic in this phase. Finally, the fibrotic phase is characterized by alveolar duct and interstitial fibrosis with emphysema-like changes and formation of large bullae. There may be progressive vascular occlusion and pulmonary arterial hypertension. This vascular occlusion increases the risk of pneumothorax, reduces lung compliance and increases pulmonary dead space. Conditions which are associated with acute respiratory distress syndrome may be related to direct lung injury and these include pneumonia, aspiration of gastric contents, pulmonary contusion and near drowning. On the other hand, conditions which are due to indirect lung injury include sepsis, severe trauma, multiple transfusions and drug overdose. The management of ARDS begins with treating underlying medical and surgical disorders, minimizing procedures, prophylaxis against venous thromboembolism and GI bleed should be given, aspiration must be prevented and nosocomial infections must be treated. We must also provide adequate nutrition. Let us now discuss evidence-based recommendations for the treatment of acute respiratory distress syndrome. The evidence includes discussion of ventilatory strategies, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, early neuromuscular blockade, glucocorticoid treatment, surfactant replacement, and inhaled nitric oxide and epoprostenol. Of these, early neuromuscular blockade seems to have a class 1 recommendation. The ventilatory strategies in acute respiratory distress syndrome in the ICU are of prime importance. These include a low tidal volume ventilation, as we will discuss later in this presentation, minimized left atrial pressures, high PEEP or open lung strategy, here PEEP means positive end expiratory pressure, prone ventilation and recruitment maneuvers. Of these, low tidal volume is found to have survival benefit. During expiration, there is an end expiratory alveolar collapse. The rationale of low tidal volume ventilation is to prevent this in conjunction with a positive end expiratory pressure of about 5 millimeters of mercury. Low tidal volume of 6 milliliter per kg when compared to 
a tidal volume of 12 ml per kg was found to have survival benefit and this was most significant amongst any intervention that we have till date therefore one of the most important messages in this presentation is the use of low tidal volume as a ventilatory strategy in acute respiratory distress syndrome other ventilatory strategies in ARDS include high frequency ventilation partial liquid ventilation lung replacement therapy with extracorporeal membrane oxygenation prone ventilation the fluid management in ARDS consists of reducing left atrial filling pressure which minimizes pulmonary edema this improves arterial saturation and improves lung mechanics and reduces the duration of ICU stay. We will now summarize the management of ARDS. We must initiate volume or pressure limited ventilation with a tidal volume of less than 6 milliliters per kg with a plateau pressure or P plat of less than 30 centimeters of water. The oxygenation settings that we must use is a FiO2 of less than 0.6 and a positive end expiratory pressure of less than 10. We must target an SpO2 of 88 to 95%. We must minimize acidosis and target a pH of more than 7.3 and a respiratory rate of less than 35 beats per minute. And diuresis must be undertaken, however, hypoperfusion must be avoided. As for the sepsis guidelines, the mean arterial pressure must be maintained at more than 65 millimeters of mercury. The prognostic factors in acute respiratory distress syndrome include advanced age, pre-existing organ dysfunction, Function, chronic liver disease, cirrhosis or chronic alcohol abuse, immunosuppression, sepsis and increased Apache 3 scores. The prognostic factors in ARDS are also related to direct lung injury. Such patients are twice as likely to die when compared to patients with indirect lung injury. Functional recovery in patients with ARDS occurs in a majority of patients. However, patients with a low static respiratory compliance, high levels of required positive end expiratory pressure, longer duration of mechanical ventilation and high lung injury scores all have less recovery of lung function. That's it for our presentation on acute respiratory distress syndrome. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.